Hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. And it's time to finally, not only finish Sam Raimi review series, well, at least for now, until he does another movie, but also to finally review Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Blu-ray back there. Finally picked it up on Blu-ray. Over there. And, uh, yeah. So this was, you know, it was coming out. And there was a whole lot of stuff coming out about, oh, you know, the trailers hinted at the Illuminati. Who's an Illuminati? You heard, uh, Patrick Stewart's voice. <gasps> Professor Xavier, you say never. You know, come back to that character again unless it was in a Deadpool movie. Well, they must have enticed him with something. I don't know what, but they must have enticed him with something. And then there was, like, Sam Raimi is directing this. Oh, my. Stop. Scott Derrickson dropped out because they had a different, like, approach. But from what I've seen of this, like... The only thing I could think of is that Derrickson wanted to make a more straight up sequel to Doctor Strange. With Mordo as the villain. Which, by the way, that post credit scene with Mordo at the end of the first Doctor Strange, as of right now, goes in the bin with the Loki being in, with the Thor post credits, post credits stream, post credit scene with him supposedly being in uh, Selvig's mind. That's thrown in the bin with this one because there's no, they don't come back to it at all. Like, there's a mention that, like, he, that Strange mentions that his mortal hates him, but other than that, the mortal in this film is not the mortal from the first film. But, uh, but yeah, and uh, the only thing I think of is that he wanted to do that, and the Feige and the others and Marvel. They were doing this multiverse stuff, so it had to be a different mortal. I'm guessing. It's just a guess. It's just a guess. But uh, this movie has been divisive amongst fans who thought because of the name Multiverse of Madness, it was going to be more like Spider-Man with No Way Home, but like more extreme and more multiverse. There's only like two or three different Earths that we go to, really, that we see at least. There's our Earth, which is designated 616. There's 838, which is where the Illuminati are. There's another Earth that's strange and another character gets stranded on towards the end. And then there's the Earth that America Chavez is from. So that's four different Earths that we see in the film. There's a bunch of different ones that they go through that just quick snap going through stuff. And that was their whole, look, there's the madness he's going through. But it's quick. So I guess there's another Earth at the beginning. I don't know which Earth that is, but there's another Earth at the beginning. Too. We get right into it when this movie starts. It's like right into it. We have America Chavez, who's our new character here, with another Doctor Strange who has a ponytail. And they're trying to get the book of this Vishanti, which is said to be all powerful. I can take down any foe. But this creature comes in, tries to go after her, and this strange decides I have to get rid of her power, which will kill her. And look, why do you have to write in your script, if you take her power, she dies? Why can't you just take her power? Why does she have to die? I see in all these movies, oh, if I do this, you're going to die. Why? Why does taking her powers have to make her die? I think that's lazy writing because like to take someone's power, you could take someone's powers and then still be alive. It's lazy writing to put this character in peril and in more danger. Like, I hate that. I hate that whole, if I take your powers away, you're going to die. But why? Why does she have to die if her powers are taken away? It's stupid. And, uh, yeah, there's this thing coming after them. And that strange dies, and uh, it portrays it as a dream. So apparently, our dreams are looks into the multiverse. 
I guess. And then Christina, love interest when the first film is getting married. And, you know, you start thinking, wow, what, when? Well, there was a five-year gap and Strange was gone. So, yeah, that happens. And he's at the wedding for some reason. Then all hell breaks loose when America comes bursting in and there's this big monster who looks like Shumagora because of copyright. They can't call him that, so he's Gigantus. I don't care. It's Shumagorath. I don't care. It's Shumagorath. I don't care about copyright. That's what the character's supposed to be. It's Shumagorath, okay? I'm just saying. Stupid ass copyright names aside, it's Shumagorath. But it... You know, he dispatches of him with the help of Wong. Wong doesn't do much, but he dispatches of him. And America says that there's someone coming after him. So, Strange goes to get help from the only Avenger he can think of at the moment, apparently. Maybe he just, you know, the first one that popped in his head. Because there are other Avengers that could help him, but he decides to go to Wanda. Yeah, this decision doesn't make any sense. How... Like, there are other Avengers that could help with this. He goes to one. Why? Because I need to find the Book of the Shanti? Oh, that it's... That it... I don't know. Like, that it's magic-powered? I don't know. I really don't... The, how they bring Wanda into this... If they were going to do with Wanda what they were going to do, they didn't need to bring her in this way. Is what if what what if this this way instead of trying this is feels like forcing her in this way because spoiler alert she's the main villain which I'll get to in a minute she's the main villain so she's already hunting America Chavez down why does Strange have to go and find her in the first place wouldn't it be a little bit better if we were building this up. Like, there's this villain coming after her for some reason, and then it's Wanda. Think about this. Instead of back in 2019, Kevin Feige, announcing that she's going to be in the film, you don't announce it. And you're like, oh, Doctor Strange, there's this villain. It's coming after America Chavez, and Doctor Strange has to defend her. Who is this villain? And then, boom! It's Wanda. That would be better than what you've done. Because, because you've already... And this That's probably why. They're in a tight spot. They've already announced that Wanda's in the film. They don't want to reveal she's the villain, but even with the with the with the, the way you do trailers, that still could have been a mystery. But we'll get to that in a minute too. When I get all into the spiel about the her being the villain, we'll get to that. Um But if you were to like I said, build the mystery. Who is this villain? Who's coming after her? Reveal that it's Wanda. There'd be more mystery to it. You don't need him to go seek out Wanda because there's no need to. Only reason you do that is because you announced she was in the movie. So we have to make it, oh, he's going to go get her. And they're going to team up together. But that's not what happens at all. And it would have been a bigger surprise and a bigger shock if there's this villain coming after her. Coming after America Chavez being. Don't know who it is. And, you know, lead the fans to think Mephisto or, or Mephisto or Nightmare. And then it's Wanda. You know? Instead, you announced that Wanda was in the film. So now you have to cut your trailers to make it look like there's another Doctor Strange that's the villain. And there is sort of an evil Doctor Strange in this, but he's not the main villain. But the trailers made it seem as if it was. Because they didn't want to reveal that Wanda was the villain. But they already revealed she was in the movie. If you did not reveal she was in the movie, you could have hidden your villain better. You could have done a better job of sowing the seeds of this mystery villain. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Mephisto? Is it going to be Nightmare? Is it going to be Kang the Conqueror from another Earth? Who is it? It's Wanda. And now we'll get to my spiel about Wanda being a villain. Why? Why does she have to be a villain? It doesn't make any sense to me how she would go from, I created this alternate reality where Vision and I had a family not hurting anyone. Putting everybody in like a sitcom world where everyone was happy and everything. Not hurting anyone. Except for maybe Agatha. But not hurting anyone. At all. Not physically anyway. They were stuck there. But was it really bad to be stuck there? Was it really... 
You know what I mean? I'm just saying. She wasn't really a villain in WandaVision. And now she's gone from, oh, I didn't hurt anyone. But I kept them in this alternate world to, I'm going to kill whoever gets in my way to get this girl who can go through multiverse so I can get my kids back. Big stretch there. Big stretch. And maybe that's why they hid that she was the villain in the trailers. Because either, either they just wanted to surprise people or... They were afraid if they saw Wanda was going straight villain, people would get angry. Uh, and there are people who are on both sides of this, and I'm on the side that doesn't like that she's the villain. I don't think, like, for who knows how long, we were saying, we were speculating who's going to be the villain. Is it Mephisto? Like I mentioned, is it Nightmare? Is it someone else? And evil Doctor Strange even intrigued me when I saw the trailer. They could do that. It could be Mephisto in disguise. Or it could be a real evil Doctor Strange. It would work. It could be, you could make it like an, an evil version of Doctor Strange from another, from the multiverse. It would work. And then just reveal that it's Wanda is disappointing. Because you're then taking a character who had some sympathy for her. Making her a straight up villain. And in the end, you again try to play that sympathy. But in my eyes, it doesn't work. Because this woman has killed who knows how many people. And at the end, we're supposed to be like, oh no, look. Poor thing. She feels sorry for herself now. So we need to feel sorry. No. She's killed people. Many people. To, to try to get what she, what she wanted. We cannot then sympathize with her after that. You have, Marvel, you have ruined this character to make her a surprise villain in your Doctor Strange movie. I'm just saying. So, Doctor Strange goes to meet with her, and we get a nice little subtle thing. I like how they did this, where it's like, maybe you bring America here, and then he stops, and she stops. She's like, you never told me your name. By the way, what the hell happened to her accent? She's supposed to be from Sokovia. Her accent has like completely disappeared now. There are instances when it's like lady be a little bit, but it's pretty much gone. I I understand like you live in America, your accent gets less, but like like the longer you live in America, the more and more your accent goes away. But this is completely gone. I don't understand that at all. Uh, I understood it in WandaVision because she was in like, an alternate universe thing, and she did get sort of her accent back when she wasn't like when she left the fourth field to confront the sword agents she had a little bit of her she had her accent back it was there but now it's just gone either they don't care or they forgot she's supposed to have an accent so i don't know and yes and so then they go to camartage and there's another thing so cliche and i hate in these movies she is able to find them no matter where they go and that's bullshit that is another lazy writing technique. Villain finds them wherever they go. How? It's never explained how she can find them. They go to Kamartaj, supposed to be heavily protected. She's there, starts blowing shit up, killing people. How did she find it? How did she know that's where they were going? They jump through infinite parallel universes to the Earth of the Illuminati, and she somehow fucking knows that they're there. Magic? No. Lazy writing. Lazy writing. Because we need her to find them. So no matter where they go. You know, I've seen in many action movies, horror movies. No matter where someone goes, villain's there. A teleporting Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 8 makes more sense than this. Yeah, I went there. So, they go to Kamartash. She shows up. Starts, you know, attacking people. Some people die. A lot of people survive. Um, Strange puts her in the mirrorverse or whatever it's called. The, you know, she breaks out, you know, sort of, and she starts using mirrors to kind of attack them. This forces America Chavez to send them to another Earth. 
Um, I will mention that they did bury the other strange with the ponytail on the roof that comes back later. Uh, didn't expect it to, but it does. Um, but yeah, so now there's another earth. This is where you go through all the different, there's like a cartoon one, there's a paint one, there's a weird other ones, you know, different ones. Uh, dark one, stuff like that. And then in this earth where everything is green everywhere, there's like green everywhere. And this is the Illuminati's earth, 838. And so they decide they're going to find this Earth's Doctor Strange, but they find Mordo. They're Doctor Strange supposedly died fighting Thanos. Okay, uh, they find Mordo with the dreadlocks. And, yeah, I'm disappointed in Mordo too, because I wanted to see where they were going with his journey at the end of the, of the last one. But again, throw that into the ether, because that's probably not going to happen, because they decided to go a different direction with this entire franchise. So, no. I don't think we're ever going to get the, the conclusion to that scene. But he greets them, gives them tea, it's drugged, and they pass out, and they're brought into this lab, and they find out that this Earth version of Christina is working there. And then they take... Mordo shows up, takes Strange to see the Illuminati. So here we go, all right? Here we go. The Illuminati... First, we have Photon. It basically says, oh, it's Captain Marvel. It's Photon. Photon. All right. Marie, uh, Maria Rambo? Maria Rambo. She's Photon, not Captain Marvel. That is specifically a moniker, in my eyes anyway, for the Carol Danvers. Photon. Or Captain Marvel, you want to call her that. Maria Rambo. All right? She's there. Black Bolt from the Inhumans in his suit. I never watched the Inhumans. I have a pilot episode on Voodoo. I haven't watched it yet. But I know about Black Bolt from the Fantastic Four cartoon series. He was one of my favorite characters on there in the Inhumans saga. One little talk of his voice. He just he whispers. Whisper. And it does that shit. He's a very powerful character. Not that he's used that way. And it's Anson Mount. Once again, I should... The, the actress who plays Maria, Maria Rambo, Same actress. It's Anson Mount from the Inhumans TV series. Uh, we have Captain Carter from the What If series. People say, oh, it's not that Captain Carter. Why not? There is no... Where that it says that the Captain Carter from What If can't be the same Captain Carter from 838. There's nowhere it says that. So in my book, it is the same Captain Carter. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> after that little throwing a fit, but it yeah, my eyes, it is the same Captain Carter. So, uh, who else? Who else do we have? Black Bolt and Maria Rambo and Captain Carter. We have Mordo is on there. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Fucking Fantastic, Reed Richards, played by John Krasinski. And the only thing I'm disappointed about is that it doesn't seem like they're going to bring him back for the Fantastic Four movie because everything I've read about this cameo is that. Oh, we did it because people were fan casting him for the Fantastic Four movie, so we satisfied that and put him in this movie. But that doesn't, you know, tell us. Is he also gonna? He should be. I, this is not what the fans wanted. If you don't cast him as Mister Fantastic in the actual Fantastic Four movie, you're fucked. Because now you've shown us what we can have, and while this Fantastic Mister Fantastic doesn't do shit. We want more. I want more of this. We want more of this. This is what we wanted. So give us more in the movie. And you can say, oh, well, different characters look different. Every single, like, every single alternate version we've seen are all played by the same actors. So by casting a different actor, you say, oh, it's a different Earth. They look different. Even though you haven't shown that a single character looks different in any other fucking universe is bullshit. It's just doing it because you don't want to have that actor play the character in the actual movie, but you're going to satisfy us 
you know, yeah. It's like Warner Brothers and the Zack Snyder Justice League. Oh, we gave you your Zack Snyder Justice League. We're not going to go forward with anything else. We're going to do what we want. But we gave you it. Eh, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted more of that. So Marvel, learn from DC's fuck up. Give us more John Krasinski as uh, Mr. Fantastic. Okay? And then we have the obvious one. Patrick Stewart as... Um, Professor Xavier from the X-Men. But this was not from the X-Men movies. He's wearing the green suit. He's in the yellow hover chair. And when he comes in, you hear... Na -na 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 -na. Let me tell you. I watched this on Disney Plus with my mom and my son first. They had already seen it the night before, but they wanted me to watch it with them because they had questions. And then I watched it again here. Both times. At least the first time, most of all. Goosebumps. Because I'm sitting there. I'm not expecting it. He comes in like, okay. Yeah, it's, I'm like, oh, he's got the green suit. The yellow chair. Wait a minute. Na -na 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 -na. That's the theme song from the X-Men animated series. Goosebumps. Ooh, goosebumps. But the Illuminati is... It's basically a, basically a cameo so we can get that Multiverse of Madness stuff. Here's your cameos from the multiverse. They should have each been from a different Earth in the multiverse. In the multiverse. Because it would make more sense. But they're all from this Earth. We find out that, they, that they're strange. Use the Darkhold to kill Thanos. And so they were forced to kill him in retaliation. But later we find out that they only did it because Mordo told them to because Mordo was jealous of that strange and he wanted Strange's place. So we get Wanda showing up and she kills everyone in the Illuminati. She, like, Black Bolt goes to whisper something. She gets rid of his mouth in a great scene. What mouth? Mm -mm -mm. Because he utters something, it blows up his own head. Mr. Fantastic turned to spaghetti. So... It's down to Captain Carter and uh, Photon, right? Maria Rambo. Call me Maria Rambo. Those are going to get triggered when we call her Photon. Maria Rambo, all right? So Captain Carter gets taken care of. She's cut in fucking half. But people have pointed out this, um, this uh, mistake. Maria Rambo dies from a statue falling on her. Now, she's been stabbed in the gut. But a statue falls on her. And that's supposedly what kills her. Captain Marvel survived being flung across the battlefield with the Power Stone. Statue kills this one. Bull shit. She could still be alive, I guess. But it uh, doesn't make any sense. She's supposed to have the same powers as Captain Marvel, right? If the other Captain Marvel could survive an Infinity Stone fling at her across the battlefield, she should be able to survive a statue falling on her. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But, no. And Wanda ends up also killing Professor Xavier. But, I will point out the things. When he's in Wanda's mind, he's wearing the black, tight, long shirt, the black pants, like in the animated series when he walks through. And he's walking. You see that. He does this. Which people pointed, oh, the Professor Xavier in X-Men movies do that. Um, James McAvoy's did. He went. And I swear I remember Patrick Stewart's going like this a few times, too. But, yeah, he's doing, he does both of the hands in this one. So it is a little bit different, but the other versions did. They did this, but you know, close enough. Uh, but America for America for uh, America Chavez. Uh, there's the portal opens. Wanda gets to her. The portal opens. Strange and Christine get flung. To another earth while she takes 
because there's a point where they destroy the the dark hold, but it's only like a copy. So um, Wong is forced to take her to like a temple that's like designed to worship her, I guess, and that's where she is able to dream walk in the Wanda of 838. Uh, 838's Wanda, I should say, to do this. And then she goes back to her Earth. That one is like, my kids. She flies off. And we're, I'm assuming it's the same Wanda she's been watching. Coincidence. <laughs> sure. Uh, that's a coincidence. But anyway. So. But anyways. So she's at this temple. She's flung Wong off the freaking mountain. So I thought he died, but he's still alive. He just doesn't do anything else really until the end. Uh, and Strange is, they're now in another world where an incursion happened. So Strange has to find that that, that Doctor Strange. Uh, we get this scene where we see this desolate world and he walks through this like fence. Uh, in the trailers, he's by himself, but here Christine is there. I noticed that this time, watch, like, wait a minute, he was by himself in the trailer here, Christine. I don't, I don't remember Christine being in that in the trailer because they they erase things so but yeah he finds the evil doctor strange from the trailer that was supposedly he's supposed to be the villain but he's not he's a strange that used the dark hold and now he's got the, the third eyeball um because uh, they were trying to get the book of Vishanti uh which they did they got to it but Wanda shows up and screws everything so yeah, because Vishanti is destroyed, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but uh, they defeat. He defeats that Strange, and then has to dream walk in the dead corpse Strange from the other Earth, and we get this. This is where Sam Raimi becomes Sam Raimi. I forgot to mention another cameo: Bruce Watch, baby, Bruce Watch. When they first get to 838, they, uh, America steals these uh, pizza balls from Pizza Papa, and it's Bruce Campbell. And Doctor Strange uh, basically makes him squirt himself in the face with cat with uh, mustard, and then makes him punch himself and says he's going to be stuck doing that for three weeks. I got to say that because we come back to it. So uh, he dream walks. In this dead strange and uh, uh, basically has a showdown with Wanda but he's not strong enough so America you know Wong get, finally gets back up the damn mountain and says you have to take Kobawa's and so he talks to her and says you have you have to do this you have to you know face off she's still not strong enough but she's able to control her powers to open the portal to where the the kids are and they see that she's this witch and so she realizes what she's done and this is where we're supposed to say, oh she realizes she's done all this bad stuff but I'm not going to sympathize with a murderer she's killed all these people minus possibly Maria Rambo she could have survived that that uh, statue I'm just saying but uh, yeah I'm not going to sympathize with this and she He's like, we gotta get out of here. So they, you know, he's disconnected. They're like, we'll find you. And so she and Wong jump through the portal and want to destroy the temple, killing herself. I said it. She's dead. There's been so much debate. Oh, there's a red burst of energy. Means she teleported. No, it means when it crushed her, all her magic went. She sacrificed herself to destroy it. She's dead. And if she comes back, I'll say I'm wrong. But in my eyes, she's dead. All right? She's dead. D-E-A-D, dead. Deed. Deed, 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 deed. She fucking, she's fucking deed, okay? She's dead. People are struggling. Like, oh, well, uh, when, because I, I got an argument. I'm like, no, she's dead. And they're like, oh, uh, when she destroyed the temple, there was a burst of red energy, meaning she teleported. Nah. It's just when it crushed her. Her powers went, <laughs> that's what it was. She's dead. So, it's my opinion, but I hope she's dead. 
Because they've ruined the character, so just leave it like that, okay? They've ruined the character by doing all this shit. Just leave it at that, okay? Uh... So, America gets uh, Strange back. Strange and Christine. Christine goes back to her world and Strange goes back to his. And uh, we see that now America is for some reason training at Kamataj, even though she's not a sorceress. She's, I don't know. They maybe didn't know what to do with her at the end. And Strange goes off. We see he fixes the watch Christine gave him before. And then he, ah, and he gets the third eyeball, like the other one. Because he used the dark hole to dreamwalk with in a corpse, so that's what happened, and it ends there. But then it's very weird because it ends with him screaming, and then the mid credit scene is him just walking down the street as if nothing happened, and then uh, Charlize Theron shows up as Clea, and I thought about this. And I looked it up. It was, he mentions earlier in the film that he had a sister, but died when they were little. I'm like, is that Clea? No, 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 no. Quite the opposite. Apparently, she becomes his wife in the comic. So I was way off. Uh, but it was something that crossed my mind. Is that, but they could do that. If they want to change the character. Uh, the comic fans probably be pissed, but I don't know. They could do that. I don't, I don't know. And he's like, you, she's like, you caused an incursion. You have to come with me. And she's like, rip open the hole in the fabric of time. You see, like, worlds and stuff. And, He's like, let's go. Third eyeball, and they go through. And then the post credit scene is Pizza Papa finally stops punching him something. He looks right at the camera and goes, it's over! And then it ends. And then Bruce Campbell does. This, from, I will say, talk about the Stan, Sam Raimi part of this. What It was fantastic. There was a lot, a lot of cool horror elements. The music by Danny Elfman was great. There was a lot of Evil Dead 2 Sam Raimi stuff in this, especially like the bringing back the zombified stuff. It's great. Uh, but the film, for me, watching it twice now, I don't know. There's so much they could have done. I'm disappointed by the villain, but that's no new thing for the villains of the MCU. There's a lot of disappointing villains in here. Uh, but I'm still going to give it a pretty, 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 pretty good because I think it's an enjoyable experience. I don't know. I think they ruined the character of Wanda Maximoff too much. I think that they should have left her as an Avenger and not a villain. You could have brought any other villain in. Maybe they wanted to and they were told, no, you can't do that. I just... I feel like there could have been another villain other than Wanda that she didn't need to be the villain. Even an evil Doctor Strange would have worked better than her. You know? Maybe instead of Having the eighth episode of What If be a connecting thing that connects all the episodes, you should have left them separate. And then the villain of this movie could have been that Doctor Strange who found a way, is finding a way to get to America Chavez so that he can get out of being stuck and he's just sending monsters through the multiverse. You know, he himself can't leave. And it's then they have the uh, face off. In the black hole that was his world, yeah, like, or he finds his way through using America. I don't know. I don't know. It just, it, it, it would, I don't know. I just didn't care for the villain, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, so it's pretty, 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 pretty good. So what are your thoughts on Doctor Strange and Multiverse Madness? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.